Now here's an explanation for essential question number two, version six during the summer of 2011. Um, this one's tricky. Uh, what we're looking with at here are essentially two linear gradients. Well, kind of. There's a constant series there. You see this part right here where it goes up by three every single time? And then what happens is it goes three, six, nine, twelve, and then around here it suddenly starts going up by one every single time. So what we're looking at is, is, is this concentrate, uh, complicated mix of two linear gradient series, a constant series that has to sit on top of it, so it, it's a little on the ugly side. So let's start off with the easiest part, which is going to be this linear gradient series right here. And so this is the one that starts at 6 and goes up to 9. And it's a classic linear gradient series because it goes goes from 0 and goes up 3, then it goes up 3, then it goes up 3, and then it goes up 3. So it's just a linear gradient series, simple. So it's up by 3, looking for P, you know, cap G, here's the I, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4 of those, plus 1 for the pot, it's 5. And then what we're going to do is time shift it a bit, knowing that it's got to um, have its last non-zero element in time period 9, so this clearly has to be a 4, and if you think about it, Relative to this sequence, here's time period 0, here's time period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the logic works out. Now this other chunk over here is a linear gradient too, except the pace changes a bit. And so we're going to have to do just a little bit of, um, of time shifting and also fit a constant series underneath there in order to support it. So what I'm going to be doing is taking a constant series that's 13 high all the way across. and then setting a linear gradient series that goes up by one each time on top of it. And that's how I'm breaking this up. Remember, there's an infinite number of ways of breaking these kinds of things up. I'm just picking one that's convenient for my eye, as I point out my ear when I do that. So let's go and get in this uh, 13 high constant series. Right there. We'll figure out what the N is and how it's time shifted. And we'll also deal with this um, linear gradient series. that goes up by one each time. And we know that that one's going to have to be time shifted. We'll figure that one out a bit too. So starting with the 13. So these are 13 high sequence that starts in time period 10, ends in time period 16. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. You know it's got to be time shifted. If you think about it, what the numerator does is it takes all these, sweeps them off the table, and puts it over into time period nine. And if you add up the 9 and the 17, you should get 16, which is the last time you see one of those little 13 hanging around there. So there's the constant series. The linear gradient series is, is this one that um, is just a, a 1 stacked on top of time period 11, and then the 2 stacked on top of 12, and then 3, and so on down the line. So what you're seeing is that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 non-zero elements. Add one for the pot to get you up to 7. And then what you got to do is you got to figure out how it's time shifted. And my suspicion is that the 9 makes sense. And if you think about it, here's time period 0, here's time period 1. 2 is the first time when you see a value. And we're all done. So again, it's another one of those um, time value money problems that has three components stacked on it. Anyway, here's the solution to essential question number 2, version 9 during the summer of 2011.